In 91 BC, the Italian peninsula erupted in a conflict known as the Social War, which raged for four years. While there appear to have been a few issues being fought over, not that the evidence is fantastic for any of this, the core issue at stake was apparently Roman citizenship, because the Romans, of course, had this, and their Italian allies who were in rebellion did not, but wanted that citizenship because of the rights it bestowed. These included the right to vote in Roman elections, but also legal protection, such as protection from torture, as well as a perceived number of benefits like greater social status and a better chance to succeed in economic matters. It was incredibly important to the world of ancient Rome. So how did the Romans ensure that the status itself was protected, and how did they ensure that not just anybody could claim to be a Roman citizen? Well, there were several methods, depending on whether the person in question was a civilian or a soldier, and depending on the time period being examined. Much of it comes down to three different types of proof. Military diplomas, civilian records, and names. In the original core territory of Rome, there were two types of citizenship that somebody could have. Roman citizenship and Latin citizenship, sometimes called Latin rights, which were granted to some Latin towns after the Latin War, which pitted an alliance of towns, roughly 30, against Rome, which Rome ultimately won. Those privileges included the right to trade with Rome, the right to vote as a single tribe, and the right to upgrade one's standing by obtaining Roman citizenship. As Rome expanded in Italy, Roman citizenship and Latin citizenship initially was expanded slightly and granted to Latin colonies in newly acquired territory. Men who held either of these citizenships had the right to the tria nomina, which was comprised of three different names, the praenomen, the nomen, and the cognomen, which denoted the personal name, the gens, or clan, one belonged to, and then a smaller subset of the gens. Thus, Gaius Julius Caesar was personally named Gaius, belonged to the Julii gens, and who also belonged to a subset of that clan which traced its ancestry to a man who had the name Caesar. There are multiple explanations of where the name comes from in Roman sources. As Roman territory expanded, however, this system became less useful. One could always invent more names for themselves, and it's possible that citizenship could be claimed through those means. Another way of doing this was by simply the claiming one was a Roman citizen, and hoping others believed the individual in question. But how would you actually prove citizenship if you had to? This is where legal documents enter the picture. The most famous granting of citizenship is Caracalla's decision to make all three men in the empire citizens in 212, but there were other decisions to grant citizenship to large numbers of people throughout Roman history, such as the decision by Augustus to do so in 40 BC, and the passage of the Julian Law to grant citizenship to those Italian allies who had not revolted in the social war. In addition to this Roman citizenship, there were different types of social organization, depending on one's legal standing. Freedmen, women, clients, federati, and peregrini all had different rights. So, to ensure that these classes and their associated rights were properly known, within 30 days of being born, parents had to take their children to a local Roman official and have them recorded in their town or city's records as being a full citizen, or as being a peregrini, or a freedman, etc., based on the parents' own legal standing. When this was done, if they were a Roman citizen, the child would be given a tablet which declared them as such. Of course, this could in theory be faked, so not only was the illegal manufacture of these tablets punishable by death, the Romans also had a security mechanism built into this document. On one tablet was recorded the number of witnesses to the event, normally seven, and on the other tablet was the name of the individual in question, their family, date of birth, and their hometown and province. The two sides were then placed on top of each other, with the texts facing each other and wax was poured into the space in between, forming a mold. The whole thing was then tied together with wire or twine. Should citizenship ever be called into question, the seal could be broken and the tablets and the wax compared with each other. And, every five years, these official records were updated and they were kept in local archives, as well as in archives in Rome itself. If a diploma was not able to be created, two other types of documents were used. Emperors who decreed that groups of people were now to be regarded as Roman citizens had the decree written out on a document called a libellus, which recorded the granting of citizenship by the emperor, 
Or, in lieu of this, higher-ranking officials were given the green light to notarize documents called professios, which could then be used as proof of citizenship. In short, there were multiple documents which could be used to verify citizenship, much in the same way that citizens of the U.S. today can have citizenship verified by producing a passport, a naturalization certificate, a birth certificate, or a certificate of citizenship. The same type of method applied to military diplomas. Legionaries were already citizens, but auxiliaries who served their full term, the length of which varied depending on the period, but which usually ranged between 16 and 25 years, were made citizens when they were honorably discharged, along with their families. Those who showed bravery or displayed extraordinary skill on the field stood a chance of being granted citizenship by imperial decree, and military diplomas stemming from this also referenced the decree which granted citizenship to the unit. If, however, this ever came into doubt, the issue could be brought to court, and the witnesses recorded on the tablets were expected to testify on the citizen's behalf, and the archives of the hometown of the individual whose citizenship was in doubt would be searched to produce the required documents, whether that be the original tablet, the libellus, or the professio, is that the documents, under extreme circumstances, were never quite enough. One had to refer to the actual decree which made them citizens in the first place, and the witnesses to the action had to testify alongside the presentation of those documents. So in summary, how did Romans guarantee and verify Roman citizenship? Initially, they were able to use the Tria Nomina to do so, but once the state expanded and this became less realistic, they began to refer to documents kept both in a citizen's local town or city, and oftentimes in Rome itself or in a military camp. And if this was ever in doubt, those documents and the witnesses could be mustered to prove that somebody was indeed a citizen of Rome.